Welcome, movie fans, to a brand new, never-before-recorded episode of Satan's Hollow Victories, where even the high score is still pretty low. I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my bad co-host. Hello, I am the Game Dude. Back in the public eye. Oh, after all this time, we, we got him on our show, Hollow Victories. That show yeah. is great. But he he's not the most famous guest we have on today, because joining us, please introduce yourself. Yo, I'm Chris, also known as the Retro Gaming Nerd. I do video game stuff. Yes, and today we are looking at two movies created to promote video games. And we've never done this before. <laughs> it's every every time I go to Wisconsin, I I lose an episode of Hollow Victories. I can swear. we just can we just blame this on Mitzi? My my D drive fucking knows. To be fair, last time it failed like two weeks after I went to Wisconsin, and this time it failed like a few days before I went to Wisconsin. But it knows. It knows I'm gonna go to Wisconsin, and it's like, yeah, nah. Fuck that. Time to, to erase the drive. Luckily, luckily this time all I lost was this episode of Hollow Victims. <laughs> Imagine if that you're like, I, I did your like Abed video like backed up to hell, but that would have been a, I mean, that would have oh, probably you know. had to been canceled, right? <laughs> like, Listen, I, I, I put the Abed video on an external drive the second my computer started acting up, and thank God I did, because the video would not have come out otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> it would have I, just like, been the, done. The, the version that came out on YouTube was exported from my external hard drive, not from my computer, because my D drive failed. So yeah, this, this, is, this is a re-recording for uh, everyone playing along at home, but... I don't know. I I I think these are both memorable enough movies that I I am looking forward to having this conversation again. I don't. Yeah, care. I I think I I remember these two pretty well. I, I think I remember liking them quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> I think my if my memory still serves me correctly. If my memory serves, you really liked joysticks. Right? I mean, I yeah, it I favorite. think it's I think it's probably the best thing we've watched for the show so far. Uh, I did want to address the elephant in the room, which is that we have not yet done a matchup of two bad video game movies, which would be very easy to do because there's a lot of bad video game movies, but because there are so many, I kind of want to do something like special for it. I'm, I'm planning like a big thing for all the, the video game movies. And maybe it won't happen. Maybe we'll be like, no, nope, okay, that's this was more effort than we are willing to put into this show, and and then we just start doing like regular episodes of bad video game movies. But right now, the plan is to do something really special with video game movies. But in the meantime, we have today's two movies: Joysticks from nineteen eighty four. Was it eighty three? Hold on. I gotta double check. Actually. <laughs> I think eighty four. Eighty three. Damn. Joysticks from nineteen eighty three versus The Wizard from nineteen eighty nine. Uh, two movies from the eighties that were intended to promote video games. Um, did you have guys have anything else to add before we started? Uh. Not really. I think that the we'll get into this topic. I think the two years that these came out definitely made one more exciting than the other because it feels like the wizard actually had something to announce while Joystick didn't really. I love how they both yeah. inaccurately announced a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, so Joysticks, a film from 1983. Uh, directed by Graydon Clark. Prior to this, was mostly known for some like weird exploitation movies or or like horror movies and shit. Um, starring one Mister Joe Don Baker as like the villain who wants to shut down the arcade. Um, 
this is the the story of you know the this arcade owner and his two close friends a nerd who just started working for him and the fat guy who's good at every video game uh and the, there's you know the the evil Joe Don Baker who wants to shut them down because he thinks his daughter is spending too much time there and he thinks the place is like full of sin and vice which to be fair there's a lot of naked girls in there a lot of the time. As most so. arcades are like. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember that. That 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 was really what arcades were like in the 80s. A lot of hot, naked women. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. I was there. <laughs> the story of joysticks... You weren't alive in the 80s. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> the story of joysticks really starts with a film called Animal House from 1980. Um... Classic slobs versus snobs story. I, I, I love Animal House. It's one of my favorite movies. But it was extremely successful. And following that, you got a film called Porky's. And Porky's is basically Animal House with none of the charm, none of the humor, and a lot more nudity. It, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, come, I have both these movies up on Google. And that Porky's is like the first recommendation for... <laughs> joysticks not even animal house animal house isn't there the wizard and porkies is there <laughs> porkies started this genre that was that i like to call the 80s teen sex comedy it's it's a comedy film that is mostly an excuse to show off naked women and that is very much the vein that joysticks find its, itself in it, it, uh, just just a movie that is an excuse to show naked women. It, it's kind of like the comedy version of something like Striptease. We mentioned in that episode, it's like, oh, I'm not renting a porno. I'm renting a drama. This is like, I'm not renting a porno. I'm renting a comedy. It's just like a, a way to disguise it almost. So you don't have to feel ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Even though you probably will at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, th I do find movies like these very weird. It has a 5.1 out of, like, 5 out of 5 stars on uh, Google reviews because one person rated it. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, you, you could be the second person, Michael. You can sway the vote. Oh, man. Do I want to ruin its perfect score? <laughs> do I want to be that guy? I mean, this... I, I mentioned Animal House. This film very much tries to have its own Bluto, uh, John Belushi's character, in, yeah. in the form of McDorfus, the fat, slovenly character who uh, is, is extremely good at video games. Uh, but he's he is a far cry from John Belushi. He is not yeah. funny. He is not charming. And I blame a lot of that on the script. Like, I mean, a big part of his, like, shtick is he just farts a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. This film has so many rough characters, to be honest. We'll get to... I guess we'll talk about casting at a point. Um, before I say my piece, uh, do you want to let Chris give her opinion on this movie? Yeah, Chris, you're our guest. What did you think of Joysticks? Ah, uh, shit. See, um... <laughs> Uh, this movie kind of, like, I remember it, but I also am a little fuzzy on it. I'm more focused on the fact that my dumbass was like, oh, you can make the joke that Joysticks is penis. So, like, <laughs> that's kind of where I've no, been. I, uh, that, that does seem to be the implication of the title. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I like, mean, they, they have this whole opening theme that is just like, oh, I love to play with my joystick. Yeah, like, and I mean, I got that, but I'm sitting there like, oh, that's maybe what the movie's going for. I, um, I don't know. I think this, this movie's interesting because it's like everything that nerd culture wasn't at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it, there's like some things that was correct, I guess, like the... McDorfus character kind of seems to be what the stereotype would have been, and same thing with the nerd. But the guy that's running the arcade, no. 
Well, but he he doesn't play video games. That's a big plot point. He doesn't play video games because one time he was having sex with his girlfriend and his grand her grandpa caught him. <laughs> I thought you were going to say his girlfriend and her grandpa. And I'm like, um, did I miss something in the movie? <laughs> his, his, her grandpa caught them having sex, and that means he can't play video games anymore. It doesn't make sense. It does it, not make sense. It's also just kind of thrown in. Like, it's at the very end of the movie, they go into that backstory. Uh, you know, what's also great is the fact that uh, they tried to train him to play video games, and somehow, some way, he still can't. <laughs> yeah, you said that there, he was like constantly, like it was trying to make it look like he was getting further in the game, but you actually recognized the game, and he wasn't. Yeah, no, he he. And the worst thing about it is they were switching back and forth between levels on his side. Yeah, yeah, no. There's like a close-up shot where, or there's there's like a wide shot where he's going after. Bells, I think. Yes. And then in the close up, he's going after pretzels, and you're like, wait, this is a different level. I can <laughs> tell it's a different level in the close up. I also love, um, last time I remember looking at it in Wikipedia, they're like, he, they brought up a fun fact is that pressing buttons does have a boost in that game, but the way <laughs> he was doing it wouldn't have actually helped. Yeah, which- they were. They were mashing all these buttons, and it's like, it's, it's, it's Pac-Man. There's no buttons <laughs> yeah. in Pac-Man. Yeah. Um, I also love the rival of the movie, or the, uh, the, 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 the Vidiots? Is that what they were? The, yeah. The oh my vidiots. god, I forgot about the Vidiots. King Vidiot. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, this, like... I, like I, I want to say punk character, but this is not what punks looked like. This is like, this is like a character out of class of Nukem High. You know, <laughs> this is not what <laughs> real punks looked like. The thing that I love is that it, the Vidiot's name still lives in nerd culture because I vaguely remember that being a team name at like a tournament for like Halo or something. So they probably seen this movie, or it just lives in the ether of gaming space. We should make, uh, next time we go to Too Many Games, Chris, we should, like, our entire group should wear shirts, like, say, The Vidiots on it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) Well, The Vidiots is what Weird Al wanted to call UHF. And in fact, in some foreign markets, it released as The Vidiot from UHF, which is, like, a terrible title. Yeah, that's awful. like... Honestly, I I don't think the Vidiots is a very good title for that movie. I don't uh, think U, uh, UHF is great either. But UHF wasn't great at the time, especially because like UHF channels were dying. <laughs> but in retrospect, like now, thirty years later, it's like I don't know. I think that kind of works. It's like this obscure TV term mm-hmm. that only people who are like really into TV would get. So I, I think it, it works better with 30 years of hindsight than it did at the time. I, uh, that's fair. I just don't think it's a title that, like, I think it's going to, like, the only people it would attract are people who are big fans of Weird Al and never heard, like, oh, shit, this is a Weird Al movie. And then also just, like, anyone who understands what that means, which is not going to be a majority of people. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's actually a good movie. That, that was a fun movie to watch. Uh yeah, uh, no, I, I love UHF. Yeah. I, uh, um, one thing Chris pointed out with the Vidiots was, like, he, his his motivation for teaming up with uh, Joe Don Baker in this movie is that Joe Don Baker offers to buy him his own arcade cabinet, <laughs> and Chris was like, uh, yeah, this was after home consoles were released, like, like yeah. <laughs> Atari and... The original Nintendo NES was out the, at the time? The NES was coming up, yes. Um, but the Atari was out. Like, good and out. Was <laughs> you know? there any type of production hell with this movie? Not, like, where it got delayed? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, in fact, I, I think they pushed it out pretty fast because uh, the reason, of course, we've selected it for this matchup is that it promotes the, at the time, new game, Satan's Hollow, 
And the reason that's in there is because they they asked Midway for permission to use Pac-Man in the movie. And Midway's like, yeah, sure, but you should promote our new game, Satan's Hollow. Which, of course, went on to be a very successful game that everyone remembers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look it up, and I'm like... <laughs> More so getting like a tourist attraction rather than a, <laughs> than the game. Um, as I said at the beginning of this, though, um, Satan's Hollow has been out at the time too. <laughs> yeah, it it had been out for a little while. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I, I I think Midway was still sort of hoping to like promote it with this movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I, what I feel like is, like, with the other one, the game was out, but, like, not everyone had access to it, so. It does have a pretty cool uh, arcade cabinet, if you look that up. Uh, it actually looks neat. They should have that at Too Many Games. Yeah, Too Many Games. If you don't have Satan's Hollow, you're not a real gaming thing. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Mario 3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all the cool kids are playing Satan's Hollow. You, you play Mario 3, that's some baby shit. Come, you know, come. now that I think about it, um, Satan's Hollow would have been a cool thing to kind of, like, use as an excuse for the dad to see that game and be like, Satan's Hollow, uh-uh, not my daughter. Like, Yeah, that, and that would have been, like, a great <laughs> promo for them, too, because that's clearly the type of audience that they want. Like, oh, or it's rebellious, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. that would have been a good idea. Yo, you know what I think is rebellious? Super Pac-Man. Oh, fuck. Not just regular <laughs> Pac-Man, it's Super Pac-Man. Yeah. You know what? I, I was A-okay with my daughter playing Pac-Man, but Super <laughs> Pac-Man is too far. This That's too much Pac-Man for my daughter to be playing. <laughs> I kind of wish that they used Miss Pac-Man, because then we could have said, oh, well, this movie has a legal controversy, but... It does actually have Miss Pac-Man in the game, they're just oh, not, it does. like, uh, yeah. it's just not the big game they're playing, but they have, like, the arcade machines, and they mention her multiple times. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I That's a whole other rabbit hole, but, like, I, I didn't even know that was a thing until, like, a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something about this movie? Kind of a broad thing about this movie. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that The Last Airbender um, couldn't even get the names right, despite the entire blueprint being there for Shyamalan to follow, I would put this in last place. <laughs> I fucking... I, I remember, like, we had to pause at one minute when we were watching this one, and when we paused, I was, like, we were, like, getting near the end, and I was just like, Matt... Uh, if you guys like it, that's fine, but I fucking hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't hate it as much as you do. I even find a bit of charm to it. It's, it is this, it, it's such a product of its time that it's uh -huh. like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of cute, actually. I, 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 f I find some charm in it. I can respect that. And like honestly, I think I I think it's like not even the most soulless thing we've talked about. <laughs> uh, it's just like God, it, it's just it was so painfully unfunny. I mean, I, I felt like this was like probably the most I am just staring at a screen and not getting <laughs> absolutely nothing the entire time. Like Last Airbender, I actually think that movie has some nice set design, but it's just like again, yeah. The the, the I think the fuck up in that movie is like hard to beat. Because it's like, again, he had an entire show and couldn't get the characters' names right. That's a problem. But <laughs> I, I didn't think it was funny. I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't think anything about it was interesting. I was, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I could see why someone would even, like, find charm in this movie. I don't, like, want to act like, I don't want to act like there's any superiority, like, because I don't like this one. But it's just like, uh, yeah, this one really didn't work with me. I, I really hated it. I was so fucking bored watching it. So here's the thing is that um, I don't know where I stand on this movie. But mm -hmm. I definitely do think that as a gamer and as a person that likes gaming and history, this is kind of a... If we, if we can talk about The Wizard, I feel like this is also a talking point. It's something that I feel like if you are into the arcade scene or arcade culture, it's a movie that's valid to see. 
Yeah, I could see how historically that would be true. I mean, I definitely think they're... Both of these movies do show a fair amount of game footage in it. Yeah, honest, honestly, like... Nah, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll say that when we get to the wizard. That's that's something to do with the wizard. Uh, this movie, it's it's not good. I'm not gonna argue it's good, and I'm I I understand completely why someone would hate it as much as Michael does. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I don't think it's like the worst thing. I I've tried to give like credit to movies on this show before, where it's like at least there was like a. It seemed like there was a person behind it. I. Don't this one doesn't feel like the most soulless thing we've talked about. I don't necessarily think this is coming entirely from a place of passion. I think that this is a well, definitely a movie where they're trying to yeah. sell something to you, but it definitely has more personality than some of the stuff we've talked about. Like it has more of a pers- a soul than Garfield, you know. But like, still, I would rather watch that movie than this because I just I really got uh, there's characters in this movie that just flat out annoy me. Um. Like, we, uh, Corrine Boher, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but it's the char- girl who plays Patsy. That is a great example of a character who should only have, like, one or two lines in the movie. Because the gimmick with her is that she sounds very irritating. And, and a little bit of that is funny, actually. I think she did the voice really well. But you don't want to listen to her throughout the whole thing. You don't want to listen to a character with that voice the entire movie. Um, you need to know, you know, you know what I'm talking about? How she talked in the movie? Oh, like a valley girl? Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's the beginning of, uh, the baby got back video. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they just like, yeah, like as like a bit character, that'd be fine. But as like character, we're going to listen to the entire fucking movie. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I believe my exact words were. This is a voice that works for the duration of the opening of the Baby Got Back video. <laughs> it's funny that this is the second uh, rap reference in content that I've been involved with. I didn't expect that to come into this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you're exactly right. No, you are like 100% right. I just didn't. <laughs> if, if you want me to swing to the other end of the musical spectrum... Uh, there's a scene in this movie where they start playing what is so blatantly the intro of My Sharona. Yeah. (laughs) And then at the last second, they throw in, like, a slightly different melody, and then it's a different song, and it's like, no, that you you were playing My Sharona there for a second. You you got the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's, if any other rapper did it, we would have. Oh, yeah. It's. Yeah, but I, I think it's just because it's Vanilla Ice that we uh, <laughs> shit on. Which you guys did a Vanilla Ice movie as well, so. Yes, we did. You, you, yes, you did. did. You did. You did that because, like, you, if it was anyone else but, like, the coolest rapper who's ever lived, come on. <laughs> He's cool as ice. We, we should talk about the cast a little. Because you got Joe Don Baker as the uh, the villain there. He was okay. I, feel, I had, like, the right energy for this kind of character. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, like, listen, I, Jodon Baker kind of gets shit on because, like, they, they did, uh, Mitchell on MST3K and he was, like, a complete asshole about it. He was, like, so angry at the Mystery Science Theater 3000 people for <laughs> riffing Mitchell so after that, they just made it, like, a thing to make fun of Jodon Baker. And, like, yeah, okay, he's he's kind of a shitty person. But he's a decent actor. He's in good stuff. Yeah, like, I you, feel... You, you put him in the right role, he's fine. People get into, like, a habit of where if, like, some, uh, if they dislike someone, they have to, like, stretch it. Even, like, there's plenty of things you can complain about, but they have to make up stuff, too, just to make their case better. Like, I've seen people do that with fucking Chris Chan. It's like, no, there's already enough shit about Chris Chan that can be said. You don't have to make up stuff. Uh, same thing with Derek Savage. People, like, add stuff to the list that isn't actually, like, accurate. <laughs> and it's like, no, there's already plenty of bad things to say about Derek Savage. You don't have to add on to the list. Yeah. Um, I thought that Leaf Green, Pokemon Leaf Green, who played uh, Eugene Grobe, <laughs> uh, I feel like he did a good job. I feel like, I don't really like the, like, again, I don't like the writing of this movie, but he did play an awkward nerd, like an over-the-top awkward nerd really well. Real yeah, talk, I, mean, I thought he was going to be the main character. Same. Yeah, they start off on him, but then, like, as soon as he, he meets, like, the guy who runs the arcade, he kind of becomes the main character. Yeah. Yeah. You got Leaf Green, who was in two other movies besides this. Um, and you've also got Jim Greenleaf, uh, oh, yeah. who, was, who was not in a lot besides this. He was in Evil Speak. I, li I like some Evil Speak, but uh, he, he, was, he was not a particular... Most of the actors in this did not go on to much else. The one I think we need to bring up is John Grice who went on to play, who, who plays the King Vidiot in this movie, and would go on to play Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> and he's, he's good. He's good as Uncle Rico, actually. I think that's a pretty good performance. I, I think in this movie you have performances that are good with a bad script, performances that are just bad on top of the bad script. And I think he is like somewhere in the middle because it... He really feels like he's trying in this movie. He feels like he's doing yeah, his mean, best, but it's just such an awkward character. It's kind of hard to pull yeah, off. Yeah, I, I think it mostly comes down to the character he's playing. And it's like, yeah, th this character doesn't work. So whatever you're doing is not going to help. Yeah. Um, I definitely thought he was like less irritable than like Jim, Jim Greenleaf, who played like the, you know, the fat gamer guy, right? Yeah. Because I, I felt like the performance and the writing was just really bad for him. <laughs> um, Scott McGinnis as the arcade owner, he's just kind of a generic main character. Not nothing, um, nothing too unique about him. Honestly, Eugene would have been a more interesting character to follow. Yeah, one joke I completely forgot about until right now is uh. So, so Jodon Baker has these nephews, right? And they're <laughs> they're kissing up to him, presumably because they want some of his money. Um, and so they they take it upon themselves to like investigate the arcade, but they have to go in undercover for some fucking reason. It's not <laughs> like anyone there knows them, but they 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 gotta go in undercover. And one of them goes in dressed as a woman, so of course it's the classic joke of, 
ha ha, it's it's a man dressed as a woman, but then another guy is attracted to him. Whoa, oh. wacky shenanigans. Yeah, that was uh, a <laughs> pretty like pretty common joke for the time. On, I mean, like, yeah, that's like. No, I, I mean feel, that was a that's still a common that was still a common joke like in the two thousands. Yeah, yeah, I feel like maybe over the last five years that died down. Uh there was that was definitely still happening in TV shows. It's it's weird. <laughs> the trans perspective. It's yeah, weird. It's it's <laughs> weird that like it keeps happening <laughs> in media. Like, I mean, I will admit it's funny, but it's just, it's like, uh, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Does this happen that commonly to people? Yes, it happens <laughs> every day. Someone's attracted <laughs> to someone, and then it turns out it's just a guy in disguise. Well, it's funny, because going back to rap on this one, because that's apparently my thing now. <laughs> uh, Matt brought up a great point that that comes up a lot in rap, so I, and also in movies. Yeah. So is this is this a common thing? Do people keep falling for these <laughs> people? Is this is a thing? There's a shockingly high number of rap songs where it's like, oh, I saw this chick who was super hot, but then she had a penis. <laughs> Hangover 2 did that joke, and that was 2011, so we at least have it up to that point. Jeez. So, I mean, I mean props to Joysticks for being one of the early adopters. Yeah. Although, uh, some like it hot has not beat by, like, 30 years. It's just... It's just it's a weird thing because there was no need for it, and it came back. <laughs> no, I, I I did think it was funny that like later in the movie the idiot sees him out of drag and he's like, "You got a sister?" <laughs> that that was that was a good joke. That they they took a bad joke and then tacked a good joke onto the end of it. And then they uh, I guess technically yeah, they referenced it three times. Somebody was like really into this idea. Because it comes back in, like, the hellscape, I believe, that he was trying to portray the, uh, oh, yeah. the arcade was at. <laughs> yeah, Joe Don Baker's, like, talking about how bad the arcade is, and we get this flashback to, <laughs> or, or this, like, dream imagination sequence of how bad it is, and he's in line for the women's restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think the one thing I will say about the antagonist of this movie is that they weren't too over the top of an antagonist. Like, it, it got to a point, but it was never like, you know, I'm gonna tear down the whole place with a whatever thing, you know? Because I feel like some of these movies take antagonists a little too far. Where, like, it's getting into, like, just, murder territories. <laughs> I mean, it just, dep- it just depends. Like, if, uh movie wants to have a really over the top villain but like the it's like it's one it's funny like it's written well and two it's like it, it like matches the tone of what it's going for i'm all for it if it's like something that's trying to be a bit more serious and then they throw in a really goofy villain then it's like all right well this is a little weird um, uh, all i'm saying is that it's interesting that they didn't go like i'm gonna burn down the arcade or anything you know yeah Mm-hmm. Fucking uh, Ernest rides again, where the villains ju- <laughs> like, like even after like Ernest is no longer an obstacle, he's just like, no, fuck you, I'm still gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also like how, um, and I know we're kind of trying to wrap this up, but I do like how uh, the mayor or whatever got into video games at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was that was funny. Like, the ending kind of is what made it worth it <laughs> for me. <laughs> There's some especially bad scenes in this movie. Um, I forgot to mention, we forgot to mention it this time, but there's that extended uh, scene with them breaking into the uh, Joe <laughs> oh, Don yeah. Baker's house. And, uh, you know, there's like, one, there's like kind of an extended rape joke. I mean, maybe... Well, okay. how, how how much of a rape jo- is it really she's, a rape joke or she she's asleep and then uh mcdorfus is like oh hey eugene here's your chance and he's like i'm not gonna do that to a sleeping woman and then she like grabs him and pulls him into bed with her and it's like yeah yeah i, I, I don't know how i feel about this but then you know at the end of the movie uh, that's that's another thing we forgot to bring up this is the rare 80s comedy that ends with one of the main characters 
cucking the villain it <laughs> ends with him having sex with Jodan Baker's wife. When she's awake, it's it's consensual. Yeah. Because, uh, like, I mean, honestly, you could argue that the joke there is less, like, haha, rape funny, but also, but rather it's just, like, it's, like, I don't know, it's just, like, she's asleep and th- all this crazy stuff is going on without her waking up and... <laughs> and but uh, uh but there, aside from that joke there's also like uh the guy uh he's trying to give um Jonathan's trying to give Eugene a chance to escape from the house so he goes to the like front door and starts giving a sap story to Joe Dun- Baker's character and it just oh my god the improv is so fucking bad there it, it feels like it's ad-libbed because it doesn't be- seem like anything that someone wrote and he just keeps repeating the same shit over and over like that scene is like i feel like this entire sequence goes on for like seven to eight minutes and it the, the whole thing could have been fucking two minutes well they they do keep cutting back to uh the nephews at the arcade mm-hmm. but uh yeah they they keep the scene going on way longer than it should he because it keeps being like oh, i just need some I need some guidance. I need some words of wisdom and you have everything. So together, but like they'll cut back to him and he's saying the same thing. It's just like, if you're going to make a scene like this work, you got to be decent at improv. I don't know why some people just assume they're good at improv. I've seen that with a lot of like a lot of shit, honestly, like there's some like, sh- there's stuff that I Yo, like. Michael, that that. you can just say stupid smash bros and uh, no. it wouldn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> it's just like, there's a difference between doing it on, like, a podcast or, like, an unscripted video versus, like, a film, you know? Oh, no, I'm, I'm straight up joking. Yeah. <laughs> I get what it's you're saying, just, I'm just joking. I, I, I improv a lot, too, and I'm sure most of the time it's unfunny. But, uh, <laughs> but it's just like, God, it's just such... I hate those long, really long, drawn-out scenes where you're not, like, getting anything out of it. It's not funny, it's not interesting, it's not moving things forward. And it's just, uh... It's, awful there's a lot of moments like that in this movie honestly to me it feels like you know they they shot you know they they did multiple takes of him giving this same speech and then in editing they're like no we need more of this no we need more of this no we need more of this because you've got the other scene going on meanwhile and so it's like okay we've cut back to them we need more footage of him talking so they just use a different take of him saying the exact same shit. Yeah, honestly, that's a good theory. That probably is exactly what happened, but I don't know. Just that's why you need to be a little bit thoughtful when you write your movie. <laughs> you need to think about how you can cut back and forth to certain things. And yes, yeah, some of that will change once you're in the editing room. Like scenes will get cut or be like shortened, but you know, like you do a little bit of work. You don't just do all the work in post. You you save yourself some of the work from post. That's what you need to do. Yes. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm sorry for going on, rambling on about this stuff so much, but yeah, I, I just, I hated this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you did. I don't <laughs> mind it. I, I think it's cute in some ways. I, I think mm. it has its charm. And I, I think it's, like, pretty interesting for what it is. It's, it's like one of the first movies to be about video games. Like this. This is before Tron. This is before the Wizard. This is before the oh, Last ew. Starfighter. You're right. It is before Tron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, do we want to move on to the Wizard? Uh, yes. Chris, would you like to introduce the Wizard for us? Sure. Uh, even though this is the second take, I still have no goddamn clue how to one hundred percent describe this movie because it is a movie. It is a movie that was, sorry, I don't know where to start exactly. It was a movie that was directed by Todd Holland and written by David, I have no clue how that, Kristen, whole Kristen, whatever. (laughs) Forgive me. (laughs) And it is about a child with PTSD trying to make his way down to California along with that entering a video game tournament, which saying that out loud doesn't sound like these two ideas would go together, but they kind of do. It is almost like two different, feels like two different movies at different points because mm. his, his PTSD doesn't really have anything to do with like the games and whatnot. But. Yeah. No, I, that's the weird thing about the movie is like the kid is going to California 
because he like he misses his mom and there's like this place he and his mom used to go and then his, like his sister all the above yeah, his, yeah, his sister his sister died i'm sorry i it's, <laughs> it, it was it was his sister um not his mother his mother is in this movie actually yeah yeah, I, yeah. You, you you are correct on that one uh, his sister died, and this was this place they went to, used to go together. Um, and then Fred Savage is the one who, like, derails it into this video game tournament plot, which feels like that's that's the focus of the movie. That's the main part yeah. of the movie. So this, like, extra stuff with him trying to get to the dinosaurs feels so awkward. You know what sucks? Is that I just got back from LA a couple days ago and I did not check if that dinosaur is still there or not. <laughs> I I think those dinosaurs are like a pretty popular roadside attraction. I I would assume they're still there. I think that uh, in terms of like the sad backstory for the main kid, although you could argue that Fred Savage is the main kid, uh, but like the you know the kid that is good at playing the games, Jimmy. What? Um, Jimmy is the wizard. Yeah. I think that he, uh... I, I, I'll at least give the movie credit for having a beginning, middle, and end with that. At the beginning of the movie, you already know there's something wrong with this kid. In the middle, they actually give the, st- like, kind of give the sad story for the kid. And then at the end, they have a payoff for that. Um, so it's like, you can say it's weird and out of place. You can kind of make fun of, uh, how, like, dramatic it is for a movie that's about video games. Uh, but I will give the movie, it does feel like the movie actually, like, tries to tell the story. It's not just, like, un- where, like, in, you know, Joystick, it's just kind of thrown in at the end. Oh, no, for sure. Um, it's just, I thought it was interesting that that's here. You know, normally it would just be a yeah. on-the-road kind of movie. Yeah, there, there's other ways you could give that character... That I mean, honestly, you could. you don't even have to give the character a sad backstory. The character could just have some sort of disability and this is how him and his brother finally connect with one another you know so is it cool have if like I a re- rain man situa- situation oh, yeah. With oh yeah is it cool if i reveal uh why this movie is important i know it's obvious but go ahead you know so this movie was the movie that kind of unveiled mario 3 and i keep hearing people say that this is an advertisement for mario 3 I have to say, fuck all that. This is an advertisement for the Play Choice 10. There's a lot of that shit in here. There's more of that than <laughs> Mario 3. Yeah, I think Mario 3 was just kind of like a headline for the movie. Like, it, it probably does better for the movie than Mario 3. Oh, yeah, because, like, there's a lot of, weirdly enough, the arcade versions of these Nintendo games. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like that's a better advertisement for it than anything else outside of the power glove (laughs) the power glove i love the power glove it's so bad i also feel like both movies joystick and this both focus on the weird side of gaming where like in this one they're like oh my god look at his points even though this kid on an arcade machine is halfway through the game that's not important (laughs) no no the the points are yeah no like as a kid, I always cared way more about level progress. I still do. I still care way more about level progression than how many points you get. Yeah, it's because it's because like the point the point system was almost like a way to get people to spend more quarters, like try to beat a high score. That's it. But like now, I feel like if a game comes out like that, it's not really like it's normally like a mobile game. It's not normally seen in like such a high regard anymore. People want to beat the game they want to play through all the levels yeah chris remind me what game he is playing in that scene he's playing double dragon for the nes which is hilarious because that game also has an arcade counterpart so nintendo was like no you cannot use that one you have to use ours (laughs) (laughs) um but it like yeah like points matter in something like donkey kong or pac-man Double Dragon, it's way more about level progression. Oh, for sure. And also, uh, if we want to talk about bad gameplay, uh, the dad plays TMNT, which is an infamously bad video game, and he doesn't even fight any of the enemies (laughs) on screen. I think that's when his son is playing the game, but yeah, the game footage they show is like the character going down a ladder and he starts to attack an enemy, but he misses like three times and then they cut away from it. They they cut to the screen a few times, but never is he fighting anything. 
yeah. is always just walking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like and, I said, when he does fight something, he's missing and that cuts away before it kills him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean I mean it is I, I get that it's a little hard to get video game footage in a movie like that. It's like trying to it's like you set up a chessboard, the characters are playing chess. You have to keep the continuity of the chessboard shot to shot. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, like video games are your main focus of the movie. You could do a little more with that. Yeah. yeah. You could like try to make the footage look good. Yeah, like I mean, you know, uh give the actors a little bit of time to practice the games and then just record them in real time playing them. I don't know, then it would be really easy to sync it up. I uh, I don't know what the deal was with this movie, but it felt like they had specific ones uh, either Nintendo or the movie wanted to hit. Mm. So um, they did show a lot of games off in this movie. I'll give it credit for that. Oh, like, they did, was, like, but a they lot were like of different games being shown. Oh, they did, but they were like very specific with like, oh god, I want to say Rad Racer is the one that they chose. I, I I'm not looking at my collection, so I can't tell you. But the one with the para glove, you know, they had that one being specific. Mario three. And so on and so forth. They they were a little bit better, I would argue, than uh, Joystick was. They, it's funny with a lot of these movies where they have to promote a game because they'll have characters having a good time with a game that eventually became, like, famous for being bad. Like, Mario Brothers 2 is pretty frequently played in this movie and they're having a good old time. It reminds me of Jesse Pinkman playing Sonic 06 in Breaking Bad. <laughs> like, he's having a great fucking time with that game, but... It's like infamously a horrible game. Like it's just, it's always funny to me when I see like a movie do, like a movie or show have that. Uh, so since you mentioned Mario Two, did you know that it was originally Doki Doki Panic? Uh, yeah. Okay. Whoa, wait! I didn't know that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Anyways, though, I think that uh, this one did a decent job, at least with the gaming feel, a little bit. It, it did a good job showing games off. I agree with the whole editing thing. It's like, it, if you recognize the games at all, it's like an immediate immersion killer. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure most people won't recognize that. Most people won't, like, at the at the time, and especially now, won't care about that at all. It's just like, there was a way to make it good, like, to do it right. I don't know, if you're making a movie, you can I take think, the proper steps. I think the thing that I really want to talk about outside of all the video games is the fact that in the 80s, apparently kids could just run off <laughs> and go on this. <laughs> uh, he's got his dad and his older brother chasing, or his stepdad and his older brother chasing him. And he's got this uh, private investigator hired by his mother chasing him. Oh, no, for sure. It's just, I'm all I'm trying to say is that, like, it's it's interesting that, like, they never asked their dad about it. I get that that wouldn't have made a movie, but, like, it's... There's a lot of kids doing stuff that, like, you look back at now and go, wow, shit, yeah, that wouldn't have flown. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I feel like even at the time, at some point, someone would have, like, rounded these kids up and gone, like, hey, where are your parents? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... With the, with the whole, like, father thing, I, I think that there's a, it's a little bit plausible just because, like, they clearly show, like, a damaged relationship between the father and the son at the beginning. Like, it's not so irreparable that they can't make up at the end, but, like, it makes sense that Fred Savage character would be, like, wanting to run away and would be able to go unnoticed for a little bit before the father picked up on it. And, um, and it seems like uh, Jimmy, the... Jimmy is he's autistic, right? That's I or think he's, so. at least he's some some form of like neurodivergency. Yeah. So it's it's sort of just him leaving and not really knowing any better. Mm-hmm. And that's like that's all it takes for Fred Savage to go like, yeah, fuck it, let's run off. Yeah, and I, honest to God, I think that like I don't again. I don't really mind the sad backstory or anything, but I honestly think that's enough for these two characters. I actually think that makes them very li likable. That Corey like cares about his brother. Like, uh, I I think it's like a. I think it could be a very intriguing movie to watch from there on out if it you know handles. You know, keep in mind that if it like handles the disability appropriately, like um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I actually didn't mind these two characters at all. Um, I, I wouldn't say I I don't think it is disrespectful with the oh I don't think so this angle. I, I wasn't saying it was. Not not that it was particularly good either. It was just sort of a thing that drove the plot. Yeah, like it's not anything groundbreaking, but I don't think that it, I don't think it really has the it, like opportunity to do anything offensive with it because it's just like pretty <laughs> well, passive I mean, from there on out. Yeah, Jimmy doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, I also wanted to talk about this because we didn't do it last time. These dinosaurs also appeared in like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> Indeed they did Yeah, that's all I wanted to say <laughs> Um, Speaking of not doing a whole lot You've got Lucas The one yeah. with the power glove And like he's set up as like the big villain of the movie When you first see him And then you don't see him again Until the competition at the very end and it's not even, like, a one-on-one -on -one competition. There are three players in this final competition. So there's this other third girl who we've never met before, and it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I bet it's her. I bet she's gonna win. This character <laughs> that hasn't been introduced. Like, why bother introducing Lucas to us if you're not gonna have Lucas do anything till the end of the movie? And then not introduce this girl. You could have given her, like, a scene, and then it's like, oh, now he's, like, facing down these two rivals. But really, the, the way it feels, it's like, oh, yeah, he's facing down Lucas. This girl is, like, irrelevant. I, yeah, I, I felt like, um, on top of that, too, like, Lucas was, like, I guess it was obvious that he was supposed to be the, like, bad guy in the scene he's introduced, but, like, I'm so, I think I'm so used to, like, 80s movies having like over the top bullies that like I honestly didn't think he was that big of like a douchebag in the scene where he's introduced like he's just like challenging Jimmy to video games and Jimmy walks out and then he doesn't say anything he's just like okay uh, he's he's le he's leaving now especially since we do have over the top bullies in yeah. this movie yeah yeah no there's some bullies that show up later and it's like what's their deal they're like almost adults too yeah <laughs> Um, so like, yeah, when Lucas came at the end and then like Lucas is up to like a bad, like a big bad guy, it's like, this doesn't feel set up at all. You know what, um, also is weird about the final scene is, and this is me reading the Wikipedia, the fact that they used weird ass games to do a tournament that like makes no sense. Like they didn't choose arcade style games. They chose games like Ninja Gaiden, which was the hardest game of the time. Mm -hmm. And then like. They didn't choose, like, Tetris or anything that's competitive. They just chose weird-ass games. Yeah, like, Super Mario Brothers 3, I fuck, I mean, I get why that one was there. It was there because it's a big announcement for the movie to have. Um, but at the same time, it's like... I feel like that's even kind of a weird tournament game. Like, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe if you have, like, established rules, but it was a new game, and they're saying, get the warp whistle, get the warp whistle. Was the warp, the warp whistle it wasn't in the first game. No. Or the second game, so how do they know that they, the warp pipes were a thing, but there was no fucking warp whistle? No, and the thing that's funny about this is that, we've talked about this last time, uh, the, I, <clears throat> I can play the stupidest of Devil's Advocate on this one because the game did come out in Japan yeah. before this, but yeah. in reality though, no, this kid wouldn't have known that unless his father worked at Nintendo, which is a joke I didn't work in last time. He could have gotten that information from some, like, super obscure fanzines. Yeah. yeah, I will say, though, like, the... Even though, yeah, the game was released in a different country first, because, like, you know, with the internet, that's gonna that shit's gonna be immediate now. But, like, back then, I, I, I could imagine The Wizard actually was the, a lot of people's introduction to this game's existence. Oh, it was. Oh, or, they, or they heard about it. I think Matt mentioned this in our original recording. Or, like, they heard about it from a friend that it got announced in the movie, so then they went and saw the movie to see the, see the game I, themselves. I'm, I'm sure they promoted the movie as, like, oh, this movie has never before seen footage of Super Mario 3! Yeah, for sure. So then people would go see the movie, and then people would watch the movie, and then go buy Super Mario 3. Yeah, I'm not saying that, like, he wouldn't have known about I mean, I am saying he wouldn't have known about it, actually. It's just, <laughs> I, I feel like it's hard, because, you know, growing up in the time we did, even with the internet, it's hard to keep up with 
that kind of crap. And this kid didn't seem like that kind of character. So for him to be like the warp whistle and all that stuff just feels yeah. weird. But I, thankfully, that's how I beat Mario 3. So, hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I also like think it's a weird torment game because like I don't know if it being a new game, like I guess that would be allowed. But I mean, I don't know if you're playing Mario 3 in like a race. Do you want to make the warp whistle? Like, are you allowed to use the warp whistle? That's a good question. I mean, like, obviously, if it's in the rules that you can, then everybody's going to use it. But if um, if it's not, like, if they say no, play the game, like, start to finish, because it's a race, you have to see who actually can beat all the levels first. I don't know. It's like, no, it's a weird tournament game, I feel. I, I even heard that it was that they were keeping up with points, and um, as many gamers will tell you, uh, if you're going to do that, no, um, you're going to lose points by doing that, because you're missing out. <laughs> yeah on everything yeah. else. Yeah. Also, I'm surprised that we didn't get a my dad from Nintendo joke from Lucas or something. I know that that's a <laughs> modern thing, but like I was half expecting that. Nah, I, I feel like that's something that cropped up in like the 90s. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like the, the, my dad works at Nintendo and he told me they're making Mario 120 games. <laughs> you know what's funny? What? When I was a kid and I got Mario 64, I didn't really understand how any of these things worked, so I assumed it was the 64th game in the series. <laughs> like, it didn't even register with me that I was playing it on a Nintendo 64, because I was, like, pretty fucking small still. <laughs> it could have been I, the 64th game. There was a lot of Mario games. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't realize you had to keep going back into the same level for stars over and over. I collected the first star, and I'm like, okay, I beat level one. Time to go to level two. <laughs> so it's funny, because um, your story parallels one of mine. Is As a kid, I was talking to one of my friends about it in elementary school. About, like, that, right? And I'm like, uh -huh. he's like, somebody will get confused that this is the 64th Mario game. And I'm like, no. It's the Nintendo 64. No one would think that. <laughs> Well, now, now you have to get back in contact with your friend from elementary school and tell him that uh, you've met someone who thought it was the 64th game. Um, let's, let's talk, talk about, about oh, yeah. the Sorry. cast. Let's talk about the yeah. cast of this movie. Because uh, we, we've mentioned Fred Savage. Fred Savage plays the main character, Jimmy's brother, Corey. Uh, the main character, played by Luke Edwards, who has done stuff other than this but not like a lot yeah he's in american pie too okay hold on he's in american pie no he's in american pie too okay <laughs> that's still a weird parallel because i would argue that like porky's is what made like the american pie movies <laughs> uh i mean Mm, that's something we should talk about. Uh, put 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 a pin in that. We're we're gonna talk about the differences between this and the wizard, or uh, then joysticks here in a second. Uh, Ginny Lewis plays Haley. She has been in other stuff as well, like more noteworthy stuff like Bolt and Pleasantville. But she's not she's not a particularly popular actress. Well, but she she's got a music career. Yeah. Uh, playing the father and the older brother, you have the pair up of Bo Bridges as the <laughs> father and Christian Slater as his brother, which is actually a little funny because after last episode, I'm like, huh, I wonder how long it'll be till we do a Christian Slater movie, not remembering that he was in The Wizard. I totally forgot he was in this movie. <laughs> because we've had we've had uh, Rhapsody Street Kids, which was directed by Colin Slater, and then we did Supergirl, which stars Helen Slater, and <laughs> now we've got Christian Slater. Yeah, the um, most popular of the Slaters. I like Bew Bridges. This is like a different, you know, going off of him. Uh, I like him because he plays a pretty large role on My Name Is Earl. I think he could be a funny actor. Um. I think and he does okay as the dad in this. He's not yeah. really a lot to do. I think that the scenes between him and his son, like, I get what they're going for. It does come off as awkward to me. Yeah. 
No, I they're, they're trying to set up this emotional connection between him and Christian Slater that's not really working. Yeah. I think both of them are trying, but it's just like, I don't know if it's the script or if it's just they're having a hard time getting into these characters, but it, yeah, it's just kind of maybe a mix of both. It's it's a little rough with those two. Can I also it's... add that Tobey Maguire's in this movie? <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, I was, I was, I was, I was going to mention him. Toby Maguire plays one of Lucas's goons. He's, <laughs> he's just hanging out with Lucas at the arcade at the very... This was like his first film role, I think. I, I, I believe this is the screen debut of Mr. Toby Maguire. Yeah, I think he goes <laughs> uncredited as well. He is yeah, um... uncredited. I'm, look, I'm looking up his... I did not recognize him. I did not know this until last time we recorded this when you told me. <laughs> yeah, well, he he was like a child in this yeah. movie. Yeah, um, looking at the clip now, I definitely recognize him, but... Also, uh, something I intended to point out that I did not is director Todd Holland, who, uh... Who, who, he's, he's more of a TV director than a movie director. This is one of his very few movies, but... He is still active because he's directing the upcoming Monster High movie. Oh! <laughs> that, uh, that Mitzi will definitely be making me watch. <laughs> I, here's the thing, Sh Mitzi and I have conflicting interests on that one, because I'm like, I want it to be bad so we can pair it up with the Bratz movie, <laughs> but Mitzi wants it to be good because they actually care about Monster High. <laughs> I can I can see both sides. I like Monster High. <laughs> but I need to talk about the Bratz movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, what about Gem and the Holograms? Uh That might be good to pair with like a music musician movie. Like a Like the Josie and the Pussycats movie. Yeah, uh, or okay. Cheetah Girls or whatever we can I only say that because Gem was like not only a cartoon but had a pretty successful doll line as well. Yes. There's a 2017 uh, documentary called The Power of the Glove, and Todd Holland is, like, number one in the casting for that. <laughs> yeah, Which, it's a documentary uh, about the Power Glove. It was so yes. bad. It was so bad. Todd Holland has some credit on Eight Crazy Nights. I'm not sure what for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does a voice. He does a voice? Yeah, it just does a character named Brill. I don't remember who Brill is. Um, yeah. So, c can we uh, talk about the pacing or, like, the filming cinematography of this movie? Sure. Okay. The weird thing about this is that uh, it definitely feels like a road trip movie. Um, I like that. I feel like the pacing of it, though, is a little weird. Because, like, there's a lot of just scenes that just exist and then stop. There was one more character I was going to mention, one more actor I was oh, going to mention. Oh, go for it. Uh, Frank McRae, who plays Spanky. The truck you know, driver. I was going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, he's he's in... Uh, uh, he, he plays the police chief in both Loaded Weapon 1 and Last Action Hero. Huh. It's like the same fucking character. I swear. Uh, also, also, probably best known for his role in Batteries Not Included. Oh my god. Todd Holland directed a short called Wax On, Fuck Off. <laughs> starring, Ralph, starring Ralph Macchio and Tiffany Haddish. Michael Lerner's well, in mean, it too. Uh, allegedly, the wizard was pitched as Karate Kid, but with video games. Uh, I <laughs> okay. don't see it. This is nothing like Karate Kid. It, it, I, no. Yeah, no. I mean, like, yeah, like, it's, go like, one's a road trip movie and one is a new kid in town movie. Yeah, and, and you know, there's no, like, Mr. Miyagi in this film. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Miyagi is what makes the Karate Kid the Karate Kid. Oh, yeah. Although, it, it does star Fred Savage, who I constantly mistake for Ralph Macchio. Yeah, they, they are similar. Oh, yeah, I... I forgot my uh, obligatory Bojack reference. Uh, Fred Savage plays Goober. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go home, Goober. 
I do think that scenes with uh, characters like Spanky or even the motorcycle gang are just kind of like, yep, that happened. <laughs> well, okay, I we we have to address the scene near the end where like the body where the the bounty hunter is coming for them, and Fr- Fred Savage is like, oh, how are we gonna get out of this? And the girl is just just like screams and it's like he touched my breasts. And <sighs> it's like, oof. Okay, we're going there. Because I honestly, I don't feel like it's that hard for kids to, like, get some guy who's chasing them off their backs. It's just like, hey, that guy's fucking chasing us. Please take him away. But she she just went all the way with it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, it's weird. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of awkward moments like that in the movie. I think Spanky is a very weird character. Yeah. Yeah. He just um, kind of he just kind of shows up and starts helping them without explanation. Like all we know is that the the one girl knows him. Yeah. And that's and it. And she's and she's able to get him to do whatever she wants and then he smiles awkwardly at her. It's just it's a lot more uncomfortable than I think the film intended it to be. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think the thing that's funny about that is that that she had to scream that for, you know, I feel like it can kind of just be implied when you're stealing a kid that something's odd. All you yeah, have to do is scream at the top of your lungs and point. Saying and like, yes, yeah, s- scream, this is not my mom, this is not my dad. Yeah. But I guess she wanted uh, to get him in a lot more trouble. I think that's the point. Yeah, but it was the 80s. Yeah, they got away with it. didn't care that much. (laughs) I think uh, we have to address the the differences between these movies. Because like I said last time, there's there's a lot these two films have in common, of course. But there's also a, like these are wildly different movies. Like oh, in yeah. spite of their similarities, they are wildly different movies. Like in in Joysticks, there's a girl wearing a pair of Pac-Man panties. You were not going to get a pair of Mario 3 panties in this movie. <laughs> no. Like this this is a movie for children. Uh Joysticks was very much a movie for adults. It's weird because um, I feel like there's one kid out there that accidentally saw Joysticks because their parents were just like, yeah, it's a video game movie. Sure, y'all rent it for you. <laughs> yeah. Let's look, let's look at the yeah. poster. Well, let's like, look at the poster. Let's I see if a know. parent would see the poster and get it for their kid. Uh, well, I don't know how like... No. Nah. Well, it's, it's, the poster's it's, pretty blatant. Okay. Yeah, it's two two scantily clad ladies leaning over a, a arcade cabinet with uh, McDorfus sticking his head out the bottom. Yeah. Uh, I have no clue if my uh, parents will ever watch this, but I, as much as I uh, love you guys, no, they wouldn't check the box sometimes, especially if it's like Blockbuster where they didn't always have. You know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember <laughs> the old uh, Blockbuster covers. Yeah. So like. If you just went, Mom, it has video games in it, uh, my parents would be like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Although you, you'd think, like, most parents would, like, check the rating and see that this is R-rated. No. Uh, <laughs> That's just my parents, just, though. <laughs> just depends. Yeah, it just depends, I guess, but... My parents absolutely would have. Oh, yeah, that makes my, sense. My parents weren't the most strict people on the planet, but I wasn't, like... Allowed to watch R-rated shit. See, I wasn't allowed to, but, like, it, it, if I was buying a video game or a movie, they'd check. If it was renting, it was, like, a... Because normally Blockbuster would stop you, right? So. Yeah. I had, like, friends with parents who wouldn't let them watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie or Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and I was like, what the... F- why? <laughs> Foster's Home, it might have been they saw it as satanic. Because it was Imaginary I, Friends, which is stupid. But that, that is my assumption look, there. Because I, I, that is like literally the most innocent show ever created. Look, you, you know my like stuff my parents wouldn't let me watch videos. Yeah. Um, 
and my parents let me watch Foster's Home and Ed, Ed, and Eddie, so... Yeah, I have... Ed, Ed, and Eddie, I think it's because they said the word stupid is what they told me. Uh, I heard that, that one. Which, that, which that's fucking stupid, but anyway. But we were comparing the movies next, right? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, it, it is, like, an interest... I, I think the pair-up works because of just how many specific things these two have in common. Like, it's oddly specific how much these two have in common, but, like, yeah, like, uh, uh, like unlike comparing, like, I don't know, like, uh, Garfield and Marmaduke to kids' movies about talking uh, talking animals, it's, like, that's definitely more an easier thing to compare, while, like, yeah, this is an adult comedy versus a charming kids' movie. Yeah. Um... I definitely think, though, in terms of, like, promoting games, fuck, um, that the wizard has a lot more to show off, but but it also has the multiple years ahead of Joystick Advantage. Yeah. Where, Uh, like, Joystick was, uh, Joystick didn't have nearly as much cool shit to show off, but it also was made, like, four or five years before the wizard, so it was definitely at a disadvantage. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we were talking about, like, uh, Joysticks is very much a movie for adults, where The Wizard is very much a movie for kids. And in that respect, uh, I, I think The Wizard kind of knows its audience a little better. (laughs) You know, um... The thing is, we all think that video games were for kids, but a lot of arcades were, or, like, a lot of machines were put in bars. Like, a lot of people... Well, I I get that, but... Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, the arcade scene was, yes, it had kids, but, like, a lot of teenagers and older people were more into it. There was definitely a shift later on. But, yeah, I mean, you can even see that shift with these movies. Like, yeah. Joysticks happened at a time where we were more arcade-focused. By the time The Wizard came out, we were a little more focused on home consoles. And yeah. home consoles were kind of seen as, like, toys for kids. Yeah. Um, And that's actually funny, because um, that era... That's why gaming was saved, is because they thought it was toys. For kids, because around that time, the ending of uh, Joystick's era, that's when the gaming market crashed, so. Yeah. Was that, was it the same year Joysticks came out? Hold on. I have honestly no clue. That'd be perfect. (laughs) I'm looking December 82? Hold on. Okay, a gaming market crash of 83, so it was literally the same year Joysticks That's came out. beautiful. <laughs> it's, when, it's when the fucking video game crash happened. <laughs> Jeez. Perfect timing, guys. Oh man, if, if that wouldn't have happened, this movie would still be a, like a, a hit to this day. <laughs> No, there's an alternate universe where Joysticks was introducing E.T. Oh, uh, do you <laughs> do you remember when we discussed like what if these movies would like, exist on different timelines and Joysticks was the one that had Super Mario Brothers three and the Wizard had uh, Satan's Hollow. Satan's Hollow. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I don't think you could use the Wizard to promote Satan's Hollow, and you definitely couldn't use joysticks to promote Super Mario Three. Nintendo wouldn't let you use. Oh no, joysticks that's why I... to promote. But what are like the crazy circumstances? Like, what crazy circumstances would have existed for that possibility to happen? Yeah, see, that's why I jokingly said that's the universe where Sega won. <laughs> yeah, that's the universe where like <laughs> Sonic Extreme came out. Sonic Nintendo Extreme came out. Nintendo okay. never recovered. <laughs> Mario's the one who turned into a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone complains about how shitty Mario 06 was. Yeah. Mar- Mario had a rough transition into 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
ev- everyone keeps saying we gotta go back to the Mario Adventure games. But even they had that, like, really long segment of Yoshi trying to fish that no one likes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how... Um, they're apparently I love your fucking Sonic bringing knowledge. that back in Frontiers, by the way. Oh, okay. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> they like bit, Yeah, there, there's been a bunch of leaks. Big's in the game, and there's a fishing minigame. Oh boy! Well, um, I, 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 yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's definitely screenshots proven that Big's in the game. The fishing thing could be a rumor, but it's, I, people played the game. I think it's confirmed. Yeah, just don't save Big. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gee, are, are think, we ready to move on to voting with these two? Oh, for sure. I yeah, want to say this. Though. I forgot what we, I forgot where we were briefly. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say this though. Is that that's the greatest point about this? Is that. You can't switch these movies, right? There's no... It's too dramatic to, like, go, like, well, what if blank? Yeah. No, they they have, like, the these very similar moments. These moments where you're like, wow, these are... Like, like it makes sense to match these two up. But then there's so much about them that is so completely different. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they both definitely do, though, embody the eras of gaming that they are from but that's that's it <laughs> yeah uh i guess we're moving into voting and honestly like i i enjoy this show for the conversation and this is very much a matchup that works for the conversation if you're only here to see who wins at the end this is going to be a disappointing episode to you because uh, it's the wizard. No, n- no, it's no joystick. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of like I made that clear when I said that I would like the only reason this is better than the last Airbender comment at the beginning. I will say uh, I never actually gave broad thoughts on the wizard. I think me and you are different on that one too, Matt. Because I think for you it's like a so bad it's good. I definitely for me it's like. I don't think it's that bad. It's not great. I don't great. think it's that bad either. I, I yeah. wouldn't consider it like it's... A, I mean, there's stuff about it that is so bad it's good. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's a fascinating movie for sure. Yeah. It definitely is a product of the time, but like... Or I guess you could say that about Joystick. It's just a product of the time that I don't... <laughs> Or, yeah, I can give it that, but man, I just, I, I really dislike the characters. I really dislike the jokes. I really dislike a lot of it. Where this movie, it's like, all right, it's charming. Um, I actually do see the charm in a movie like this. I actually do think that, like, the dynamic between the three kids is decent for what it is. You know, it's not nothing great, but I don't, I don't, to me, there's nothing really that bad about this movie aside from, like, just some awkward moments, I guess. Yeah, I think it's funny mostly for, like, how it tries to promote Nintendo stuff. <laughs> yeah. Although I will say, I had no idea that there was fucking... Pl- that place that you could call where they'd, like, try to help you for the game existed. That was something I learned about because of this movie. Yep. The Nintendo um, Call Center. Yeah, yeah, no, no idea that that existed. So I actually did learn something from the. It's wizard. funny; uh, those existed until like the late two thousands. That's interesting. Um, yeah, now, now uh, all you need to do is look up a let's play. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so uh, my take on this one is that I feel like The Wizard is obviously the better movie, but for the people that I know that like gaming and stuff like that, enthusiasts of it. Uh, Joystick definitely is a, let's grab a beer and watch this movie kind of thing. Oh yeah, no, uh, I, I should give a little credit. Joysticks is a movie I only found out about because, uh, one of my Twitter followers suggested that I do a drunk tweeting of it. The, uh, the audience is with us on this one, although it's, it's maybe closer than you'd expect. It's 36 for Joysticks versus 64% for... Uh, the wizard. That means it is the sixty fourth wizard movie, of course. <laughs> um, and I, I did want to highlight Carl Wilkerson's comment that he he saw joysticks in theaters. So, 
<laughs> like that's that's got to be fucking wild. The, like you, you go see a movie in like the eighties and then fucking almost forty years later, you you're on the internet, which is something that didn't exist back then. On YouTube, just listening to these jackasses talk about joysticks versus the wizard. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I wanted to highlight that comment. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, uh, the wizard wins, obviously. Ooh. Um... So- sorry if you're only here to hear about the winners. This is not the show for you. Yeah, no. Uh, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes you have no fucking idea, though. Sometimes you have no clue. Like, the, the fucking Garfield Marmaduke episode, we we juked him out. We're, we, we were both like, nah, Marmaduke's better. There there has been an episode or two where it was so close where I was like, I'm gonna figure this out by the end of the recording. Like, uh, after talking it out. Honestly, there have been episodes where I went in with one choice, and by the end of the discussion, I'm like, yeah, no, actually, it's the other one. Uh, yeah, that was... I, I felt that way about Percy Jackson and Aragon, because I went into that like, I think Aragon wins this, and by the end of our discussion, I'm like, yeah, no, they're right, Percy Jackson's better. Yeah, I, I also had that with, uh, I think I had that with um, Barbed Wire and Tank or while I was switching back and forth a lot. Like, I almost gave it to Barbed Wire in that episode, but then I was just like, eh, Tank Girl isn't, like, so significantly like like worse made and i liked it more so i'm gonna give it to tank girl but i mean barbed wire i think was like a better made movie so i almost gave it to barbed wire yeah like it's uh it's it's definitely happened um all right uh yeah next episode so next episode is going to be the halloween episode um see initially we recorded this pretty early in august yeah. And now we're recording this two days before the end of August. Um, so we are a little closer to Halloween now. But uh, yeah, next episode's going to come out in October. It's going to be our Halloween episode. And uh, wh- what do people love more for Halloween than to revisit the classic Universal monster movies? And luckily for us... Universal has tried not once, but twice to make a franchise out of Universal Monsters. So next time on Hollow Victories, it's 2014's Dracula Untold versus 2017's The Mummy. Uh, I promised that one was going to be coming back, and it did. We were doing it next episode. (laughs) Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Um, I want to just, I said this in the last recording, so I want to say this now too. If you haven't ever looked it up, look up the, uh, trailer for the mummy that got released by accident because it is fucking hilarious. That's probably going to be funnier than anything in the movie. Damn. Probably. Um, Chris, do you have anything you would like to promote? Hell yeah. So, um, if you liked this, um, I'm going to be talking about video game media, mainly TV shows and movies, with nostalgia goggles now in color, because uh, I've always wanted to give a gamer's perspective on these shows. So yeah, you can find that on Smash Pack. Nice. Hell oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we finally had you on, because like, like this one was sort of inevitable, but you you watch most of these movies with us anyways, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was good to finally have you on an episode, and uh, be, because we've had both you and Olivia, that that means that Peyton is the only guest we've had who isn't dating anyone who's been on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although. If his wife leaves him, I will be the first in line. Bet your ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Michael, anything to add? Uh, no, not really. This was a fun pair up, and I I appreciate the t- last two episodes being fun because I feel like we're getting the exact opposite with this next one. But I think it'll be a good conversation. Uh, so <laughs> I don't think it'll be totally miserable, but yeah, this is gonna be one of the the lesser episodes. This is like, e- 
this is like on par with uh, Percy Jackson versus Aragon. I think that oh, I was actually going to say that I think so far those are the two most miserable that I've gone through, but maybe not. <laughs> really? I don't know. I I thought they were because I was uh, like they were they're, they're such nothing movies, and I feel they, like Aragon just really bored me. I feel like we're gonna feel pretty much the same about these two. Like the two Sam, uh, the two Rob Schneider movies were at least short. Uh, so thank you, Chris, for joining us. Anytime. And yeah. uh, for my co-host Michael Shadackle, I'm Matt Presents. See you in the next one. Peace.